Diane, was music a big influence on your childhood? Extremely big influence. It was my saving grace, you know. I, I think most musicians and artists will attest to the fact that we always are seen as different, you know. And so it was it was the way that I could express myself and um and and have a voice, you know, to, to express not only my feelings, but feelings that I felt other people felt as well. So I uh, translated into song. You've done a lot of work with kids and mentoring them through arts. Can you tell us why that's so important to you? Sure. It's actually my own childhood. Um, you know, when you, when you want to say something and you're too young to express it and don't know what it is that you want to say or how you want to um, get your point across, music, art, theater are all ways to emote how you feel about life. You know, it's, it's a wonderful world out here. And you're, you're so curious and you, know, you want to know everything, you know. And so art is a way for you to uh, express yourself, to find your voice, to find your place in life. Where's my lane? You know, it kind of helps you grow up a little. And so I understand children, when they're, especially when they are artistic and um, you know, they, they have a lot to say, they want to uh, express themselves through song or dance or um, any writing, writing and, and things like that. You know, I, it's a certain way that you have to bring it out. You know, you have to be able to encourage them, allow them to make mistakes, um, allow them to feel nurtured and valued. And, uh, and so I, I, I guess I feed my inner child <laughs> when I'm working with children. You hosted a youth summer camp for kids as well. We're introducing them to arts. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, back in 2000, I wrote a play and um, I went to one of the community centers in Alabama. And the play was about some of the historic um, events that happened there. And they allowed me to uh, have a summer camp. And we thought we'd have about 20 children, 30 children. We ended up having 200. So I had to hire a staff. And, uh, you know, it was the, the mayor came. And, you know, it was still on the Internet. So it's just, you know, one of those wonderful experiences that you have a, an idea. And it translates into something wonderful. So we had a great, great summer. And uh, the kids enjoyed it as well. And some of my students are still you know, contacting me today about their experience. So, you know, I'm pretty proud of that. Your CD, The Reconciliation, got some international attention. and You were actually invited to Johannesburg. Can you tell us about that experience? Sure. Um, there was, or well, there is, a disconnect uh, between Africa Americans and our African brothers. There's a lot of things that we don't know about one another. And um, I thought this would be a bridge where we could meet halfway to um, reconcile the, the past, past rather slavery, and the fact that, um, you know, we went through our own experiences here in civil rights. So to try to, br to build that, bridge that gap where we could know one another in a better way and become more conciliatory. Um, it was just a, an idea that ended up being a movement. And so I went to Africa five or six times. I was invited to uh, Johannesburg uh, for a big event. Uh, it, it was just, I, I felt surreal. I felt like, okay, I'm dreaming and I don't want to wake up for a while. <laughs> but, you know, it was real. And it was one of those like Karas moments where you, when you, first go to Africa, there's something that lets you know on the inside, hey, I've been here before, or there, there's some strange or strong connection. And um, through this um, opportunity, we were able to uh, meld our relationships. We were able to build partnerships. We were able to um, allow the children from America to become pen pals so that they would have a better understanding a clearer understanding of what's going on in Africa and how African children live because there was a lot of misconception, you know, and um, it was just, you know, one of those great, great events that I, 
I had a chance to experience and I'm very, very thankful, very blessed. You've also been honored by the state of Alabama for your work with children. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, um, it's a long history, but there is a connection between Africa and Alabama and that Africa was the, uh, excuse me, Alabama was the last place that the slave ship actually came to America. And so uh, when they came in 1869, um, that generation, they stayed in Alabama and they built their um, communities. So we were able to trace back to Africa where their lineage is from, where the, gener the generations are from. And um, that created a synergy and that they began to really kind of seek out one another because they were brothers, they're sisters, their aunts and uncles and, and, and same bloodline. And um, our governor at that time, um, he recognized our work. And I can't say it was just all me, it was a combination of a lot of us. And uh, they wrote a couple of res resolutions for me, um, acknowledging um, what we were doing. So I'm happy about that too. <laughs> Diane, you've had the opportunity to play all over the globe. Can you tell us some of your favorite venues or some of the favorite places you've been able to play? You know, John, I've been all over the world. Paris, Japan, Africa, Caribbean, all over the United States. But for me, the most enjoyable venues are the small ones, the ones that are intimate, where you can go up to the people and talk to them and touch them and they can, you know, come to you after your shows and talk to you. It's not so it's a big venue where you're guarded and you, you've got thousands and throngs of people. Don't get me wrong, I like that. But I like to be able to meet them one-on-one. -on -one. And so if you can get 20 people in a room, a crowded room, and you've got some fish frying in the back and chicken wings and the blues playing, you've got some hot guitarists that, you know, uh, they aren't famous, but they are good locally and give them a chance to get on stage with you, can't beat it. What are some of your goals moving forward? John, every day I wake up reaching for something new. Um, I remember when I was, well, a few years ago, <laughs> um, someone told me, you're gonna be known worldwide, but it'll, it'll happen late in life. I was like, gee. <laughs> I thought, hey, that's a good thing. That means I won't die young. <laughs> so um, every day, you know, is a challenge. I, I like to perform. I like to mentor. And I'm finding that I'm like, I like to mentor more than I like to perform. I like to encourage the younger generation, the other artists to hone their craft, you know, to do, be very business-like about it, to understand, you know, how they get their money, to understand not to sign crazy contracts. And, um, you know, it's just Lady Lake um, has given me such a great opportunity to meet wonderful people like yourself. And um, I've got a collaboration going on right now with a young man from Africa. There's a possible film um, project coming up where I might be able to sing the theme song for a movie. I have my own movie that I've written and I'm going to do my CD with a young man named Chip Mercandale I'm from Alabama next month, so I mean, as long as I can get up out of the bed and stretch my arms and hit a note, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Is there something outside of music you enjoy that fans might not know about? I am a ethical environmentalist. In 2009, I went back to school. I had been putting it off. It'll happen tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, 2009, I said, enough with the procrastination. I went back to school. I got my degree, my bachelor's in environmental science. And now I am in um, my master's program for environmental science, uh, public policy. So after that, if I still have the mental <laughs> faculties, I'm going to go for my PhD. I just love the environment and the idea of being part of um, an energy, if you will, that will take care of the universe now for the future generations to me is, is you know, very important. Um, and it starts with just even picking up 
paper off the ground or recycling or you know uh, compost or I mean so many different ways that we can save and, and take care of the environment so that's one of my passions and I will also be um, doing my first environmental blues <laughs> CD it's like it's like my voice will speak as one of the as the universe crying out to be saved and I'll use it in, in blues um, meter. <laughs> Where is the best place to keep up to date with everything you have going on? Call me. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm one of those people, I don't, you know, I don't have a, you know, a publicist. I don't have a, you know, I mean, other than Lady Lake, I'm, I'm very reachable. Um, but uh, for the, as far as uh, my internet access, uh, it would be www. Diane Cameron Artistry. That's D I A N E C A M E R O N A R T I S T R Y dot com. And did you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with everyone before we go? I'm just happy. I'm excited. I love the arts. I, I love music, and I'm thankful and grateful that I can still, you know, stay in this game that's been so crowded. Uh, with younger people, I mean, it's, it's, you know, this is a young person's um, field, especially here in Atlanta. So when you find an audience that can still embrace you and embrace what you do, I mean, it's a blessing. I don't take it for granted. I just want to give a shout out to Cindy and Jen. I mean, two of the most remarkable human beings on the face of the earth. Uh, their passion, their drive, their dedication, determination, to help artists, all of us, is, is unparalleled, unsurpassed by any of the majors that I've ever, you know, heard of. You know, it's, it's not about, it's not a money grab. I mean, they're sincerely interested in our uh, welfare and, and our, um, our careers. And, and they, they babysit us to a point that you, we get spoiled. You know, it's no way I couldn't, Sonia, none of them, you know, it's just because you're basically signing your life away with some of those guys. You know, they're just remarkable. I just want to make sure that there's a little shout out there. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Our interviews are made possible by the support we get from our patron fan club. For as little as a dollar a month, you can sign up for the patron fan club and be eligible for all the great benefits listed here on the screen, including the opportunity to win some great music, music downloads, and merchandise from your favorite indie artists. And the best benefit of all, is knowing that all the money pledged goes towards helping get the music of indie musicians out to new fans just like you.